Hey there, it's Corey. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at creating an edge to edge with the edge to edge function. So let's head over to the software and take a look at how easy it is to set up an edge to edge using your autopilot Mach 3. Following the steps in the last video, we've already established everything that needs to be great with groundwork for creating an edge to edge, such as sew zone, grid size, and repositioning to make sure the quilt hits the grid perfectly. If you have questions about that, make sure you refer to the previous video. Currently, we have a blank grid that we want to fill up with a full pattern to do our edge to edge. So I will open up my pattern pad and I'm going to drag over the pattern of my choice that I want to use. I'm going to take the one repeat and set it in the upper left corner of my quilt grid. I can zoom in to double check. The upper left corner allows me to get a good size view for this design. Right now, if we look over on the right hand side of the screen in our transform box, you can see the width and height of this one repeat. So say for instance, you wanted to have a 12 inch row. You can take your bottom right square, left click and hold, and drag that over while looking at your transform box until you get this desired height that you want. You can also select the height option in the transform box and enter in whatever size you would like. Make sure you keep account and note that the size of the row does not exceed your throat space or you will not be able to quilt it. Select the pattern and come into the edge to edge function. In this video, we'll be looking at using trim with clip connect turned on. If you scroll down on the right hand side, you'll notice you have a few options when it comes to variance, width, and height. Now, before we generate our edge to edge, I wanna to talk to you about variance real quick. You wanna have a little bit of a larger variance built in, like for instance, I have six. What a variance means is it's going to extend the pattern out past your actual quilt grid all the way around. You see how that kind of darker uh, borderline, excuse me, uh, white box here. That's going to extend your repeats out all the way around the quilt just in case there's any shifting in the quilt as you go. As all of us know, quilts are not made perfect and no matter how hard we try to keep them straight, it sometimes can skew a little bit left or right. And having that built-in variance will help you if you need to trim the patterns as you go throughout the quilting process. So I have a six inch variance built in. I'm gonna click on generate edge to edge and it's gonna fill up the entire section. Now this pattern repeat, these rows of patterns has a little bit of a gap in between them. So I wanna be able to close that gap by just dragging and dropping a row. One thing I would make sure you have turned on is locking your offset. If you have lock offset turned off, you can move this row left and right and it might change where you want things to actually go. So have lock offset checked and then you can zoom in and grab whatever row you would like, left click and hold and just move it a little closer to the row above it. That also takes effect throughout all the other rows as well. So you don't have to go through and do every single row. You just move one of them and it will take care of the rest, which I think is wonderful. Once we have that done, we can click on accept and that will take us out of our edge to edge process. Now you still have the edge to edge box opened up, but it takes you back to square one. So I'm gonna come over to transform this little stretchy man icon I'll click on that, and that's kind of back to home base. So, so far, this is what we have set up. But what we talked about with variance is that it extends past our quilt. Well, we don't necessarily want to quilt way off the quilt. This is just built in if there's any excess that needs to be fixed. You'll notice when you choose variance that sometimes you can have a full row built into your sew zone and then a partial row at the top. Since this is all going to be able to go into one row of quilting per se, let's go ahead and link these together before we trim them uh, from the sides and from the top. So if I left click and hold out on the right hand side and come through that second row and that partial first row, can let go of that hold, it's going to highlight both of these rows. I'm going to come into my grouping feature and choose my link option. I'll click on accept and I'll go back to transform. Now when I select the 
first, or that's technically the second row, it also selects the first one because it has linked them together with a stitchable line. So now what I can do is come in and trim this section. So I'm gonna come into my trim tool. I'm gonna be using my sew head and we're on the left side of the quilt right now and we want to trim what's to the left. So I'm going to change my trim setting to vertical. And I want to have clip connect turned on. And I'm only trimming the current selection. I don't want to trim the entire quilt because you only want to trim what you're working with at that time. Because that quilt shifts sometimes, if you trim the entire quilt, you're going to end up hurting yourself in the end if the quilt moves a little bit. So trim as you go. Whatever is orange is what's going to be trimmed away. Well, we don't want to trim away all the stuff in the middle of the quilt. So I'm gonna click on invert. That's gonna move everything over to the left. It's gonna move that orange over to the left. And I can click on accept, just like that. Now it has trimmed those away and it's gonna stitch them continuously because we have Clip Connect turned on. Now let's trim what's above the actual quilt itself. So I'm gonna move my machine to the middle of the quilt in the binding area and change my trim settings from vertical back to horizontal. Whatever's orange gets trimmed away, everything above that, which we wanna get rid of. So I'm gonna click on accept. Now we need to work on our right hand side. I'll change it back to vertical and move my machine over to the right hand side. I'm gonna set it in that binding area and I'm gonna go ahead and click on Accept. I can come into the Transform icon whenever I'm done, and I will then save my project. So I'm gonna to come to File, Save Project As, and this will be Edge to Edge Demo. I'll click on Save. And now we have that saved just in case the power goes out or we want to stop for the evening. We have a saved project. It's always good to save, 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 save as much as you can. If you think you forgot to save, go click save. It never hurts at all. Now that we've done all of this preparation, we can go ahead and start our edge to edge by clicking go. You'll get a message that one or more of the queued patterns are outside the sewing area. Do you want to DQ those and proceed? What Autopilot's letting you know is there are more patterns outside of your sew zone that it won't be able to get to. Is it okay to basically turn those red, which it won't be able to sew them, and proceed with just stitching this row? We're going to go ahead and say yes. You'll see that the row that you want to stitch is green, kind of softly highlighted gray, and then what you want to stitch in the future will be red. You're going to click on continue. Your machine will move to its starting position. You can take a single stitch and pull up your bobbin thread. You're gonna hold those threads nice and taut and press continue. I'll see you in the next video as we take a look at repositioning the quilt.